Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, family of God. Good morning, people of God. God bless you, Sister Curry. Sister Sean, Sister Campbell, good morning, good morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Good morning, Gloria. Why don't you go ahead and Hit your share button on your Facebook and share this live that we're about to do. These next few minutes we're going to spend together in the presence of the Lord and, and fellowship with each other. So if you can go ahead and share this broadcast, start a watch party. But this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God is good to us and as I endeavor today to join together to worship him in spirit and in truth. While we are socially distancing, we are definitely staying spiritually connected to one another. Amen. As the Lord desires us to also even more importantly, stay connected to him. So go ahead and hit the share button this morning and start a watch party so that all that you love can receive the love today. This is the first Sunday in July. This is our communion Sunday. So uh, get yourself some bread and some juice or some crackers because at the end of this message, we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper today. And, and I want to encourage you that uh, for you and your family during this time, buy yourself a set of communion wafers, the little pre-prepared packages. Uh, because as often as you do that, as often as you have communion, as often as you take communion together as a family, uh, you open up those blessings of the Lord, the healing and the salvation in your family's life. So there are only maybe about 27 to 30 bucks maybe between uh, book and Bible stores and online. So go ahead and get you some for your household uh, because it's not just on first Sunday that you should uh, partake of the Lord's Supper as often as you do it. You show forth remembrance of him. So we want to uh, open with the word of prayer today. Uh, get your hearts and your minds ready to receive uh, from the Lord as he speaks to your heart as we go into the presence of the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We come in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. The name that you have given us, Lord God, as our access to your throne. And right now, God, we come boldly before your throne of grace uh, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. And God, we are in a time of need. God, we need more strength. We need more power. We need more faith. We need more healing. We need more deliverance. And God, in this time of need, we come to you no other help we know. We come to you because you have an endless supply of everything that we need. Nothing that we need, you can't provide for us because you provide all our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So in the name of Jesus the Christ, in the name of the Messiah, we come to you, Lord God, asking you to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon us that we have not room enough to receive. We come to you, Lord God, our hearts are open. Our minds are open. Our spirits are open and ready to receive. But we're even more than that ready to offer up praises to your name. Ready to offer up the sacrifice of praise that you so, so worthy of, God. 
You alone are worthy of the glory, the honor, and the praise. So God, we come before you thanking you in advance for what you're going to do in our life from this moment forward, God. Thanking you for the doors that are opening. Thanking you for the healing that is manifesting. Thanking you, God, for the blessings that are yet still pouring in and overflowing in the lives of everyone who trusts you. Because you are glad in your word that you will withhold no good thing from them that love you. And we love you today, Lord God, not just with our mouths, God. We love you with our hearts today. So honor your word, Lord God, and withhold no good thing from us. Let healing flow. Let deliverance flow. Let courage flow. Let encouragement flow. We thank you right now. Everyone that's under the sound of my voice, every eyes that, are, that is watching this screen right now, Lord God, if we have come together virtually, Lord God, to still give you glory, still give you honor, still give you praise, I pray, God, that you meet them right now at the point of their needs. Manifest yourself mightily in their life. You say you will show yourself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards you. Let our hearts be made perfect today that you can manifest yourself in our lives, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for watching over us. We thank you, Lord God, for healing us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for strengthening us. We thank you for power. We thank you, Lord God, that you are, your eyes are open. Hallelujah, your ears are open, that you see and hear your people. And so, Father, we thank you right now. Bless us, God, and it is our desire to bless you in these next few moments of worship. Open our hearts and minds that we'll receive the word today. A word of encouragement, a word of enlightenment, a word of strength, a word to empower us, Lord God, to move forward doing what you have called us to do. And we thank you right now in advance. So God, I pray now, Lord God, for my son that's about to sing for us, Lord God, that you use him in these next few moments. God, that you open up his voice, Lord God, that what he sings is a sweet sound to your ear. And Lord God, your people will be encouraged. Your people will be enlifted and you will receive all the glory. You will receive all the honor and the praise. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do in this service, in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Again, good morning to you all who are just joining us. Amen. Before I release Brother Markel to go ahead and bless us with a couple songs and then we'll come back to you with the message for today. I want to again say to those who just joined us, if you don't have any communion supplies in your house, amen, get you some communion supplies. But for today, if you got some crackers in there, if you got some bread that you can break and share with your family and some juice that you can partake of as we go before the Lord uh, in communion after the message today, you have some time to do that. Amen. So let me turn the camera to Brother Markel and he's going to bless us with a couple songs and we'll be right back to you with the word of God. Be blessed.
bless the Lord in your homes. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Mighty are the works of his hand. Hallelujah. With the glory of the Lord. Rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord. Rise among us. Let the praises of our King. Rise among us. Let it rise. It's time to run. 
you believe that it's turning around for you, the sooner or later God is going to turn things in your favor, in our favor. Hallelujah. Right where you are sitting in your house, just turn to your, your husband, your wife, or your children to tell them it's turning around for us. It's turning around for me. Hallelujah. It starts when you speak it by faith. Sooner or later, God's going to turn it in our favor. There are so many things that seem like it's going awry and going against what we believe in God for, but you just have to keep the faith and believe that sooner or later, God's going to turn it in your favor. Hallelujah. It won't always be like this. God's going to perfect that which concerns you. He's going to perfect that which concerns me. It's going to turn around for me. It's going to turn around for you. Sooner or later, it's going to work in our favor. We just got to keep the faith. And we just got to believe that. Hallelujah. That sooner or later, sooner or later, it will turn in my favor. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's turning around for me. Hallelujah. Just give God a praise in your house. Just lift your hands right where you are, right in your living room, your bedroom. Hallelujah. Wherever you're watching right now, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. And just tell the Lord, I believe that it's turning around for me. I believe that even the things that seem negative, they are working in my favor. Hallelujah. I believe that things are going to work out for me. I believe that they're going to turn right for me, for my sister, for my brother, for my wife, my sons, hallelujah, for my daughters, for my church, for this land, for my city, whatever it is you've been praying for. You just got to believe God's going to turn it around and he's going to turn it around for you in your favor. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. We thank Brother Markel for leading us in those songs of worship. Amen. Because the first song say, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. And that's, if there's anything that we need to rise among us right now, we need the glory of the Lord. Because the glory of the Lord, it reveals so many things. We need the praises of our King to rise among us. So let it rise in your life. Let it rise in your house. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Thank you, Brother Markel. We, we bless you today. Amen. We bless you today. Amen. So... Uh, we're going to move on. Amen. We're going to get to the, the word that the Lord has given to us for today. Amen. And uh, hope everyone enjoyed their holiday on yesterday. I know that many people are, are, are out of town and, and may be traveling uh, at, this, uh, at this time. Families may still be gathered. Uh, but right before we go to the word, there's a couple of things I want to uh, say to you before we actually get to the message. Um, on the Bread of Life Christian Church page, there are two things that I want you to go to after uh, this message today. And one is an advertisement for the 2020 census. Uh, that's very important for us that we, you for your household, every household fill out the 2020 census. What that does is ensures that we get the right amount of money uh, into our neighborhoods as the government allocates funds. It ensures that we get what we need for our area. So go fill out the 2020 census. The second thing that's on there also is a link uh, to voter registration. If you or your adult children age of 18 or older have not yet registered to vote, that link there can take you right to voter registration so that you can register to vote because in these times, we can't leave nothing to chance. We need to pray and we need to exercise that right to vote. Amen. So. Take advantage of those two links that I have on the church page. Uh, they were shared maybe over a week ago. I may reshare them that they will be up front so that you can make sure that you take care of that because uh, it's important that, that as well as we pray and, and we preach that we go and act and we act accordingly. So please take advantage of those two resources that we have put there on the church's website uh, in order to uh, for us to know uh, and do these things that are necessary for us to do as our civic duty. We have a spiritual responsibility, but we also have a civic one as well. We watch unto pray, but we then also have to do our job in those areas as well. Amen. So please make sure that you go and do that. Uh, Matthew, the 10th chapter, gospel according to Matthew uh, chapter 10. Uh, we're going to start reading at verse 16, 16 through 22. I'll give you a couple minutes to uh, find that. The gospel according to St. Matthew, the New Testament. Chapter 10, start reading at verse 16. Uh, we have a word 
of encouragement for you today. Uh, hopefully that you will receive in the name of our Lord. Amen. Um, uh, Matthew chapter 10. We're going to start reading at verse 16. Amen. 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 So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to recite what we do at Bread of Life. And we have our word in our hand before we go into the word of God. This is what we say every week. Amen. I hold in my hands the word of God. God's word is life. God's word is spirit. God's word is power to everyone that believes. I am a believer. I am a believer. I am a believer. And God's word works if I work it. Amen. Matthew chapter 10, starting reading at verse 16. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. It says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men. Uh, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speaks, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Now, brother, will deliver brother up. Excuse me. Now, brother will deliver up brother to death and a father, his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all men for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. Again, I read. Now, brother will deliver up brother to death and father, his children and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Out of verse 22, where it says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. I want to leave with you a thought, a word of encouragement today. Hang in there. Hang in there. Just as simple as that. Hang in there. If we endure to the end, we'll be saved. I want to encourage you from those words, hang in there. Now, where is there? Let's make no mistake about it. It's in the right relationship with God. It's in the hands of the Lord. It's in the will of God. If you're walking in the will of God, if you're walking in fellowship with him, hang in there. Amen. Because we're going to go through all kinds of things. But the one that endures to the end shall be saved. Now, if you have the red letter edition of your Bible, regardless of the translation uh, that it is, you'll find these words that I just read in your hearing. Uh, they are in red, which means it signifies that these are the words of Christ, as was quoted by the writer. Uh, I love the teachings, uh, the teachings of the apostles and the prophets and, and from Solomon and all of his wisdom out of the book of Proverbs. And uh, these men, they were inspired by God. Or they were spoken to uh, by God and or his spirit. And they either delivered a prophecy or instructions to God's people, uh, be it, you know, God's chosen people, Israel or to the early church in the New Testament. But when I read the words of Jesus, the red letters to me. Uh, it's it's you're getting it right from the sword. You're, you're getting it right from the heart of God. I know that the prophets spoke as they were inspired by God. But when you're reading the red letter edition of the scripture, that's God in flesh, Jesus, the Christ speaking to us. Amen. And so there are some things God will just speak directly to your heart and to my heart. Uh, because we are connected to him by the spirit. So through his spirit, he'll speak to us directly uh, and encourage and strengthen and direct our hearts. But here's what I want you to understand, uh, that there's anything uh, that God speaks to your heart. The acid test is if it's God speaking is if it lines up with his word, because God's not going to speak anything to you or I that is not in line with his word. Amen. And so uh, that's the acid test. If you put it up against God's word, that's how you know it's the Lord our God speaking to us. 
In the first 15 verses uh, of this chapter, which I did not read, I started at 16, but in the first 15 verses of this chapter, uh, you will find Jesus having a conversation with the disciples and what he did, as he often did, he called them away so that he can have some time with them alone. Usually when the Lord wanted to give them specific instructions based on who they were and what they were assigned to do, he would call them away from the multitudes that were following them, uh, watching and witnessing and being partakers of the miracles that Jesus was performing. He would pull them aside from everyone else so that he can have some alone time with them. And you and I, we are the disciples of the followers of Jesus Christ in this day and time. And sometimes uh, his spirit calls us to a place temporarily uh, isolation so he can impart something to us. And so sometimes when the Lord has you to himself, he's going to speak some things to you away from the distractions, away from the noise, away from the opinions of people, because he he wants to be able to to you to plainly hear his voice, to plainly see in his word what it is, the instructions he has for you uh, in this moment in time. So he called the disciples apart uh, from everybody else and he imparted something to them. And what he did in these first 15 verses, if you go back and read it, he gave them power against unclean spirits uh, to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and disease. That's what he did. When he called them to the side, he imparted something to them. He dropped something in their spirit. He deposited something into them that they were going to need in order to be able to do the work that he needed them to do. So what he did, he gave them power over unclean spirits. And if there's anything that we are battling in this day and time, the kingdom of God, it is still suffering or undergoing a violent attack. And the violent comes in to take it by force. And in order for us to be able to fight back against these things that are attacking the kingdom of God, we need power from on high. And that's what he did. He gave them power. He said, Lo, I give you power. Look, I give you power over unclean spirits over all the works of the enemy. He gave them power to cast them out and also to heal all manner of sickness and diseases. And if there's anything that we need in this day and time is to exercise our God-given power and authority over sickness and disease. That's sickness and disease of the spirit, of the mind, and of the body. We have power and authority over that. After he gave them power, he sent them Amen. To recover the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He instructed them to preach. He instructed them to heal. He told them that they didn't need script or money. He told them, don't worry about your clothes. He told them, don't worry about what you're going to eat because what they were going into was a total spiritual battle. And for everything that God has ordained and called us to do, he's going to make provisions for it. For every vision of God, there is provision from God. So he told them, look, you're going to go and I want you to go out and preach. I want you to go out and heal the sick. Amen. Don't worry about your clothes. Don't worry about money. Don't worry about your, what you're going to eat. You may be asking why I'm discussing all of this when I didn't even read those verses. The fact of the matter is to help us to understand that all we need to really do what we need to do is power from God. And so the Lord say, I give you power and I want you to understand today as you're watching us, he has given you power. He has given us power. We just got to use it. We just got to use it. So then he told them, look, I'm not sending you into an easy place. In verse 16 that we first started reading, he said, I send you out as sheep among wolves. I'm not sending you into an easy place. He told them to be, but to be wise as snakes and humble as Doves. I'm not sending you to, this is not an easy place that we're living in. This is not an easy place that we're ministering in. This is not an easy time that we're functioning in. This is a whole lot. There's a whole lot going on, but I want you to be encouraged to hang in there because anywhere that God sends you, hallelujah, not as he only put a word in your mouth, he has given you power to deal with whatever situation you're going to face. You just got to keep the faith to hang in there. He said, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. But I want you to be wise like snakes, but I want you to be humble as doves. Because only when we're humble, only when we have that humility, are we so sensitive to the voice of God when we'll know it's time for us to move, when we'll know it's time for us to speak, when it's time for us to go up or should we stay. Hallelujah. We got to be wise, but we also have to remain humble. You got to know in this life uh, who is and who is not for you. And, and this is very important. But here's the thing. God doesn't want us to be 
hallelujah, the aggressor in any way other than spreading of love and the spreading of the gospel. You ain't got to go out slapping folks and doing all this kind of stuff. No, your aggression should be in, in, in loving aggressively and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hang in there, church. Hang in there, family, because God's got us. Anywhere he sends us, he's going to take care of us. And God knows in this day and time, we are living in a world where we can, we can very easily fall uh, victim to the attacks of the enemy. Very easily. Because from, since the beginning, since his, his throne is being cast out from heaven, he is walking up and down in the earth, going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. But listen, the verse that we read in verse 22 says the same, the one that endures to the end, they're going to be saved. We just got to hang in there. Regardless of the attack of the enemy, victory is already ours. We just got to hang in there to see it through. Hallelujah. We can't get thrown off about what we see with our eyes. We got to trust and believe God by faith. The just shall walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. And by faith, I believe. Therefore, I'm telling you, if we hang in there, we'll make it to the end and we'll be saved. So many attacks of the enemy, both the seen and the unseen enemy. But we've been given power so that we can hang in there. He told them that they were going to be beaten. And that men would deliver them up before governors and kings for his sake. But before he placed them in this situation, he gave them power. I don't want you to miss that. We cannot miss that. Before he sent them out, he gave them power. Before he told them what was going to happen to them, he gave them power. Power, that's the key word. Power to live right, power to walk right, power to sustain, power to, hallelujah, preach the word and it be received, power to lay hands on the sick and they recover, power to speak in a negative situation and cause it to turn around. Listen, he has given us power. And by that power, you and I in this crazy and difficult time, we can hang in there. You, but you got to be encouraged to hang in there. You got to want to hang in there. You got to want to hang in there. Before he placed them in that situation, he gave them power. I'm talking about walk right, talk right, power, power to love in the midst of all this hate, power to forgive when don't nobody want to do it. Hallelujah. Power to overcome. He's given us that power. He told us in this life, we're going to have trouble in this world. We're going to go through stuff. He said, but be of good cheer. Hang in there. Why? Because I have overcome the world. And because he has overcome the world, you and I can hang in there by the power of the overcomer. Hang in there, church. Hang in there, family. Be encouraged. Keep your hand in his hand because he said in his word, whoever's in my hand, nobody can pluck us out. Nobody can pluck them out, whoever's in my hand. I want you to be encouraged to hang in there. We need to understand the ability to hang in there to endure to the end. It's all because of the power of God as it rests upon us and it resides in us. There are no kings or governors that folk are going to deliver us up to, but listen, we're going to go through similar hell for all of the same thing and all for the same glory and all because of the same name. But the Lord wants you and I to be encouraged to hang in there. He wants us to be encouraged to hang in. So what he told them, once you are delivered up or once you are put into these difficult situations and day after day, you and I are very possible to be thrown into this very difficult situation. But here's where he told them, don't lose heart when you get into that. Because what you need to say, I'm going to give you what to say. At the self-same hour, the Holy Spirit will give you and I what to say. Because what we say during these times that we're going through is paramount. The Bible declares that we are snared or we are tied to the words of our mouth. So you got to be careful of what comes out of your mouth in this difficult time. You got to make sure that you speak the word and only the word. That's what's going to help you hang in. And so he told me, say, listen, don't worry about what you're going to say when you get in there. Don't pre-plan your speech. Don't, don't, don't try to get your words together. No, rely on the Holy Spirit. Rely on the power of God because when you get in there, that's what's going to come up, welling up in your spirit as a well of life and he's going to give you what to say, when to say it. But you got to hang in there. I got to hang in there. We got to hang in there. We don't have to worry about what we're going to say. All we got to do is be ready to stand in defense of the gospel. 
That's what we have to do. We have to be ready to stand in defense of the gospel. And everything in you, listen, whatever's in you, it's going to come out. Right now in this time, if hate's in you, hate's going to come out. If anger and bitterness has taken root in you, guess what? Anger and bitterness is going to come out. But if that power is in you, if that love is in you, if that word is in you, I don't care what you're feeling, that power is going to overcome your feelings and that's what's going to come out to the glory of God. Saints, we got to hang in there. We got to hang in there. I know it's tough. I know it's difficult. I know these times are challenging. But we got to hang in there because the verse says that he that endures to the end shall be saved. You want to be saved? I want to be saved. We got to hang in there. We got to endure to the end because what's in us, it's going to come up. So after he told them, don't worry about what you're going to say. Because at the right and appropriate time, the spirit of God is going to bring the word of God up and then it's going to come out. And then he told them that the very people that should be loving one another will turn on one another. Listen, we are living in these times. We are living in these times. Brother against brother. Fathers against their children. Hallelujah. Children against their parents. And he didn't, he didn't just say that there's going to be arguments between these people. No, the hatred and the division that the enemy is going to sow in that particular season that he's mentioning, which I believe that we are now in, is not just going to be a hatred and bitterness, but no, even to the point to where one is going to want the other one put to death or is going to cause the death of another one. He's talking about blood relatives. We are living in these times, fathers against children, children against parents, children against each other. You would think that the Lord would have just written in 2020 these things were going to be because it seems like we are sitting right in the midst prophetically of these times that the Lord was talking about. But hang in there because when you hang in there, you're going to be saved. He told us that, look, these things are going to come. We're going to experience these times. We're going to experience these seasons. And listen, he was telling the disciples of then, but you and I are the disciples of now. And if we endure to the end, if we hang in there, we shall be saved. No doubt about it. We shall be saved. We are those disciples now. We are the followers of Christ. And we are living in a time when brother's not just turning against brother, but he's killing him. Parents aren't just turning on their kids, but they're killing him. Children aren't just disrespecting their parents, but they're killing them. And saints, we are in the most deadly and tumultuous times that we have probably ever lived in in my lifetime. I'll be 47 years old in a couple of months, and I've never even uh, seen or heard of a time as bad as what we are living in now but hang in there hang in there because i believe more than the troubles that we're in i believe in the promises of god and the lord said hallelujah that if we endure to the end we will be saved hang in there hang in there god's telling us today to hang in there even in these crazy times hang in there he told them that they would be hated of all men for his name's sake. Not because of their color. And this is the war we're in now, black versus white. You know, all of this color of the skin thing. This is the spiritual battle. He said, you're going to be hated of all men for my name's sake. Because you name the name of the Lord, we're going to go through this trouble. But be of good cheer, I remind you, because he said, I have overcome the world. The world has already been overcome by the blood of the lamb. And we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We got to hang in there. We got to hang in there. Regardless of how bad it looked, we got to keep the faith. Regardless of how crazy times seem, we got to keep praying. We got to keep praying. Hang in there, church. He said they would be hated of all men for my name's sake. 
But here's how I love after he told them all of the difficulty that they would experience. After he told them about, hallelujah, he gave them power and told them, look, I give you power over unclean spirits. I give you power to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And in the time that you're going to be doing your work of the ministry, it's going to be a difficult time because folk are going to deliver you up to people that don't believe me. You're going to have to deal with folk who don't believe God, who don't believe his word, who don't believe the promise, who doesn't believe that the times we are in is prophecy being filled right in front of our lives. He told them, look, it's going to be a difficult time when fathers are going to be against children, children against their parents, brother against brother. Hallelujah. He's saying you're going to be hated of all men for my name's sake. But after all of that, he says the one that endures to the end shall be saved. I want to encourage you to get to the end. Just, just get to the end. Don't worry so much about the day-to-day -day battle. Focus on getting to the end because the one that gets to the end, the one that endures to the end shall be saved. Hang in there, church. Hang in there, family. Hang in there, my brother. Hang in there, my sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to hang in there because the one that gets to the end, the one that endures to the end shall be saved. Say, what was Jesus telling them? What was the spirit saying to the church? He was telling them to hang in there. You're going to see some crazy stuff, but hang in there. You're going to hear some crazy stuff. Hallelujah. But hang in there. And this day and time we are seeing and we are hearing all kinds of stuff. Hallelujah. Folk who have taught and preached the gospel for years, they are now turning away. But I want you to hang in there. Folk who grew up, hallelujah, in the faith. Now they are following something else. I want you to hang in there because it's not in the middle where you're saved. It's not, hallelujah, a three quarters of the way. But when you get saved, he say, if you endure to the end, you shall be saved. And listen, if you are walking in line with God as a citizen of the kingdom of God, his promises of God in Jesus Christ are yea and they are amen. And if he said you endure to the end, you'll be saved. Guess what? You are going to be saved. Your household is going to be saved. Your family is going to be saved. But you've got to hang in there. Hang in there. And sometimes it seems like we're going to be hanging on by a thread. But hang on to that thread. Because if you're hanging on to that thread by faith, hallelujah, all it takes to faith the size of a mustard seed to be able to speak to a mountain and tell it remove, to be removed. And if that's all you got, if you got just that mustard seed faith or that hanging on by a string faith, hang on to that string because that's enough for you to endure to the end so that you can be saved. Hang in there, family. You're going to hear some crazy stuff. Hang in there. You're going to see some crazy stuff. Hang in there. Folk are going to hate you just because you're still a believer. Because you haven't abandoned the faith. If you abide in the ship, you will be saved. And to be honest with you, some of us going to float in on broken pieces. But if, you, if, if, if you're still holding on to the broken piece, hallelujah, just abide to the end. Just hang in there. And you'll still be saved. But hang in there. Listen, they're going to hate you for being a believer. This might be some folk with your same blood, with your same last name. That don't make no difference. He said brother against brother, parent against child, child against parent. But endure to the end. Endure to the end and we'll be saved. Folk going to come against you for no godly reason at all. But be saved. Why? Because be hang in there because the one that endured to the end will be saved. Listen, we're going to have to endure some hard stuff. But the apostles say, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And we are going through hardness right now. We got to endure this hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ because we have a guarantee by the words of Jesus Christ that if we endure to the end, we shall be saved. Saved. And we're going to take some bumps, some bruises. We're going to go through some sick days. We're going to go through some sick weeks. Hallelujah. But we got to hang in there because God is faithful who will not suffer or allow us to experience anything that we are not able. But he will with the temptation furnish a way for us to get out. We just got to hang in there until it shows. We just got to hang into the, the hand of the Lord is revealed. We got to hang in there until the word of the Lord is revealed. We're going to have some hard stuff going on in our life. 
sickness in your body, trouble in your mind, trouble in your marriage, trouble in your neighborhood, in your society, trouble in your state, trouble wherever it is, but hang in there. Hang in there. In this world, you're going to have some trouble. The Lord said, but in me, you're going to have life. And you're going to have life more abundantly. But you just got to hang in there. Because the ones that endure to the end will be saved. Will be rescued. Will be delivered. Hang in there, church. Hang in there, family. Because God is with you. He's with us. He said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And sometimes in the hottest part of the battle, it seems like we look for the Lord and we don't find him, but he's right there. That's why you can still look around. That's why you're still breathing. That's why you're still functioning because he has not left you. Because he has not left you. We got to hang in there, church. We got to rely on the power of the spirit of God. We got to stay in the word. We got to keep praying. We got to keep fasting. That's what's going to keep us strong enough to hang in there. Because flesh and blood can't fight this battle. This is a spiritual battle. Regardless of the walks, regardless of the march, regardless of the protests, we can tear all the statues down in this world. We still got to get on our knees. We still got to get in the word. We still got to walk in the word. We still got to walk in love. That's the only way we're going to be able to hang in there and endure to the end. To the glory of God. Don't let these hard times. And here's what I want to tell you as I, as I, as I continue on. Don't let these hard times cause you uh, to stop doing the work of the Lord. Got to hang in there. Keep healing the sick. Keep preaching and reaching the lost. Even when it seems like everything is going the opposite of what it should, hang in there. Because God's hands is in it. And God's hand is on you. And his word is in your mouth. And you have his power as your backing. So I want you to profess that you're going to hang in there and the power of the Holy Ghost will keep you fighting till endure to the end. I want you to declare that I'm not going to quit on God. I'm going to hang in there. I'm not going to quit on my marriage. I'm going to hang in there. I'm not going to quit on my children. I'm going to hang in there. I'm not going to quit on the church. I'm going to hang in there. I'm not going to quit. Hallelujah. Fighting this fight of faith. I'm going to hang in there because the one that endures to the end are the ones that shall be saved. I'm going to hang in there. I ain't going to quit on God. I'm not going to quit on the work. I'm not going to quit praying. I'm not going to quit fasting. I'm not going to quit speaking God's word. I'm going to hang in there because the one that endures to the end shall be saved. And God wants to see, he wants to see you at the end. He wants to see me at the end. But we got to hang in there. Beloved, I want to encourage you today that he has given you power. Just like he gave the disciples. What he was giving them was his authority. And that authority was in his name. And if you have his name in your mouth, when you speak against anything that's gone awry, his name is going to cause things to change. He has given you and I power over unclean spirits. He has given us power to heal the sick, to pray over them, and they recover. But out of all the stuff that we go through, we got to pray. We got to stay in line with God and God's words. And we got to hang in there because the one that endures to the end, they shall be saved. Be hated for all men for my name's sake, but the one that endures to the end 
shall be saved. I speak to that place in you right now uh, that's been contemplating on turning back and I tell you to hang in there. I speak to the doubts in your mind because God is not moving at your speed and I encourage you to hang in there. I speak to that place in your heart that kind of wavers from time to time, but the Bible says nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. We're going to believe God and we're only going to believe God. Regardless of how difficult it is, we're going to believe God. I speak to those doubts in your mind and I tell you that I've got history with God. Listen at me. I've got history with God. I've seen God do it. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. So hang in there. Keep the faith. Keep praying. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Keep speaking God's word over anything else. And God will see to it that you endure to the end. Because the Bible declares, and I believe that the one who endures to the end, they shall be saved. They shall be saved. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this word that you have given unto us because you love us. You sent your word to heal us. You sent your word to cleanse us, God. As you have said, Lord God, when you have spoken the word, now you are clean through the words that I have spoken unto you. I declare that we are clean by the word that we have received today. We are stronger by the word we have received today. We are empowered by the word that we received today. And God, we thank you for sending the word to heal us. Father, I believe, Lord God, that someone that have heard this word today is going to be encouraged to hang in there because you have given them power. Help us, O oh God, to endure to the end so that we'll be saved. Rain down upon right now, Lord God, this land, hallelujah, a fresh anointing, a fresh outpouring of your spirit, Lord God, that will break the enemy's back. Hallelujah. Cause him to fall into subjection to your blood and your power. Once we speak those things, Lord God, that you have put in your word for us to speak and allow us to overcome. And we endure to the end, Lord God, we'll be saved. I pray for the sick among us right now, Lord God, that they be healed, that they receive healing, that they speak healing over their own bodies in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, they were healed, therefore they are healed in the name of Jesus. I speak to those right now, Lord God, that lie in any need right now, Lord God. I pray that you meet them at the point of their need. Be God, show yourself strong on their behalf in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we bless you today. We praise you, God, we magnify you. And Lord God, as we prepare, Lord God, to end this part of the service, God, and go into partaking of the communion, Lord God, for today. We pray, Lord God, that you bless the cup that we will drink from, Lord God, and the bread that we will eat. Lord God, as we do so often in remembrance of you, as you gave your body, Lord God, hallelujah for, Lord God, the healing of our own bodies. And you shed your blood, Lord God, for the remission of our sins, that we might receive salvation. We thank you for this great sacrifice, God, that you gave your only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord God, for your son. As we honor his sacrifice today, we give you glory, Lord God. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Well, I, if you uh, have got yourself some communion supplies, as we had uh, asked you to do, uh, earlier or admonished you to do earlier on. Uh, I asked you to go ahead and get yourself together uh, as we're going to go ahead and uh, ask Brother Markel to just play a little music for us and and we'll sing a little. I know it was the blood. Amen. And, and we'll get ready to partake of our communion for today. Amen. Listen, it ain't got to be fancy. It was bread that they break. So if you got a piece of bread with you this morning, amen, we just want to do it in remembrance of him. He that gave us power, he that keeps us, he that enables us 
to endure until the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Ooh, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Amen. As I stated earlier at the beginning of the service, uh, the partaking of communion is not just for first Sunday uh, because what this does is it receives salvation for our souls and healing for our bodies. That's why the Lord says often as we do this, we show forth remembrance of him. This is not just some ritual. This is what we do. That healing remains and that salvation remains. Amen. And so uh, I just want you to just receive that, amen, in love and make sure uh, that, as I said, get you something for your house. Keep you some juice around. Keep you some crackers around, some wafers around, amen, that when you feel a sickness coming over your body, take you some communion, amen, that God will restore and heal your body, amen, because he says as often as we do it, we show forth remembrance of him. When Jesus had gathered together with the disciples, telling them of the things he must soon suffer at the hands of the elect for our sake during the feast of the Passover, he took some bread and he break it and he blessed it and he said, take and eat. For this is my body, which was broken for you. He took a cup and he blessed it and he said, drink ye all of it. For this is the blood of the New Testament, which was shed for you. And as often as you do this, you show forth remembrance of me. Amen, amen, amen. Be saved, be safe, be healed in Jesus' name. Before closing, I just want to tell us it's so important that we be careful uh, during these times that we uh, properly distance ourselves, uh, properly wear face coverings when we're out in the public whenever we have to, uh, you know, it's real out there. Amen. So let us be wise as the Lord has told in the word today. Say be wise. Amen. Be wise. Be humble. Endure to the end and you shall be saved. God bless you is our prayer. Hang in there from Bradley Christian Church. Pastor Bradley, have a blessed week. Amen.